I love the feel of the road. You can really feel it. Uh, it's so smooth. What else? Yeah, I feel like I'm connected. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you're just one with the bike for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many, did we get all the tropes? I think did so. Did we say them all? Welcome to another episode of Save the Track Bike, presented by The Bicycle Broker. That's www.thebicyclebroker.com. My name's Josh, I'm your host, and I have a quick announcement before we get started. Um, we're officially on Spotify and Stitcher. Uh, it's taken a while, but it's there now, so get on it. Um, also, we have an online store that's live now. We have... Uh, three shirts and a sweater on there. So go on there, buy some stuff, help support the podcast. Let's keep this thing going. Uh, with all that said, on today's episode, I have Mike Norton of Aerosaur, of Ottawa Fix Gear. Um, we talk about all the work they're doing in Ottawa and the Fix Gear community up there. We talk about this really rad race they put on called Battle of the Gats. And then we talk about pink bikes. Um, and just so you know, at the end of this podcast, I got cut off a little early because my SD card got full. And we decided that uh, we'll just end it there. And all of the info on where to find them will be in the notes. And let's get to it. <laughs> Well, my name is Mike, uh, Mike Norton, uh, not to be confused with my partner in fixed gear, uh, Mike Bally. And two of us are pretty much the guys who run our local fixed gear club called Aerosaur. Uh, also, auto fixed gear, they're kind of one in the same. He's kind of responsible for Aerosaur. I do auto fixed gear, and uh, together we do uh, this race in uh, every summer called uh, Battle of the Gats. And... Uh, and uh, our team also does some some entry level crits in Montreal, and uh, and then uh, yeah, that's about it. We we run fixed group rides here in Ottawa, Ontario, capital of Canada, and uh, yeah, uh, Aerosaur, Auto Fix Gear, uh, just a nice little community that we've uh, carved out in in our small town. That's rad. So I kind of want to talk about like your history with cycling and how that led into you getting into like fixed gear bikes and stuff so uh first off everyone i ride with is like 13 years or more younger than me i'm i'm in my late 30s everyone who i ride with is at the max like 26 or something like that <laughs> so uh i've been riding since about 2010 because you know i was uh, going into my second career, so I was going back to school after, after not really doing much professionally in my twenties, and uh, my car broke down, and uh, I couldn't afford to get it fixed, so I became a cyclist. There was all these beautiful looking bikes on Tumblr, and I had to get myself one. And I started out with a conversion, like you do, then moved to a worse uh, high ten fashion fixie. And then after that, started actually putting some okay parts together. And, uh, and you know, I'm a skinny guy. I've never been, uh, I've never been good at, like, all the things that my rugby-playing brother uh, was good at. But, you know, it's not because, like, if you're, if, if you're not good at something, why, like, bash your head against it? Just, you know, pivot and do something which your body, your body habitus is meant to do, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing I like better than, you know, destroying some super muscular dude uh, on a bike. Right? Yeah, some bodybuilder type. You're like, yeah, try to keep up with me up that steep hill. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. It's so funny because you see, like, pro road cyclists, you know, all of the, like, uh, 
support team or whatever is like these super like tall huge guys and the team lead will be like you know this guy that's like five six and like 110 pounds or <laughs> yeah yeah like people make fun of me for being skinny and i'm like i'm skinny but i'm like 10 pounds heavier than chris Froome. yeah right that's hilarious so what attracts and- you to kind of doing like fixed gear over like doing road cycling or or something else so I do ride, uh, I, I'd like, like I do have a road bike. I, I've only used it once this entire summer. Uh, so I've been like, I'm 95% a fixed list. Uh, and I think the main thing about fixed cyclist is like, we like to do things differently, you know? Yeah. We don't want to be the exact same as everyone else. So that's and we don't even mean to be different. We're just attracted to, and sometimes it's infuriating because I'm surrounding myself with all these people who, who, uh, really like to be different and organizing them is like a wreck. (laughs) So, uh, you know, what do I like about riding fixed? God. So the bikes are beautiful. Uh, you can really turn yourself off just mentally during a commute you know you don't i'm not saying that shifting is the hardest thing to do in the world but you can you can slip your way through a commute and uh just let your body take over and it's much more uh it's it's a much more organic process i feel but i don't know what's the real reason the bikes are beautiful uh uh they're it's super cool i don't know I don't know uh, what I can say that hasn't been said a million times. I believe that I love the feel of the road. You can really feel it. Uh, it's so smooth. What else? Yeah, I feel like I'm connected. Yeah. I feel like, you know, you're just one with the bike for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many, did we get all the tropes? I think did so. Did we say them all? I was thinking okay. about making a series of t-shirts that say all those things. Yeah. I, uh, uh, I was riding with this guy, ryan he bought this uh beautiful bike off ebay and uh he didn't have pedals and he didn't know how to put the pedals on so i helped him put the pedals on and then as soon as like i uh i took him for a ride and he said all those things pretty much within 10 seconds he's like (laughs) oh my god it's so smooth i feel like i'm connected to the road (laughs) i mean it's true there is a reason why it's cliche because that is how it feels. <laughs> but uh, I'm kind of curious, uh, how did Ottawa Fixed Gear start and and when did it start? And yeah, tell, tell me like what you guys do up there. So uh, we have a group ride. It starts out at our local store. Uh, uh, the store's name is Joe Mama's, Joe Mama Cycles. And the ride is called Ride Joe Mama. So... <laughs> It became, it became a little bit, uh, as I was getting more and more into cycling, it had already been there. So I didn't start it, uh, but we kind of took it over two years ago. Uh, the, uh, it was started off by a guy who came out, came from Toronto and started working at the store. And, uh, he, uh, he was running a similar ride in Toronto. And, uh, so he, uh, I started the, I started riding that year and I think so far, you know, people have come and gone in the scene and it's just kind of gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And, uh, every Sunday we go out, you know, sometimes we'll start out early in the morning, uh, do a more challenging ride and then we'll loop back to the store and then pick up, uh, some of the riders who are you know, maybe can't do a hundred kilometers in a day and we just do like a chill ride and then we might stop in a park for beers, that type of thing. Uh, and, uh, we have a fun time. We try to include, uh, people who are, who aren't the fastest people in the world yet. Uh, and then eventually, hopefully some of them transfer to the harder, harder rides. Uh, it's, uh, Ottawa is a really good town for cycling because it's kind of small you can get out of the city pretty easily into some country roads. And we have this great set of hills, like 15 minutes out of the city called the, the Gatineau Hills. 
Speaking of those hills, let's talk about Battle of the Gats and when it started, what it is, and why it's interesting because it's so different than other races. So uh, we just finished our third year, uh, Battle of the Gats 3. Gat, the Gats are at these Gatno Hills. It's a local mountain uh, range. You know, they have some ski hills there and whatnot. Uh, and, you know, when we first rode up them it was one of those types of things like oh man it wouldn't it be cool if we rode up the hill on a fixed gear like it, uh we didn't think it would be we were joking that it wasn't possible and you know uh how crazy it would be and then you know we did it and you know uh we just kind of realized it wasn't crazy and it was possible and it was really fun and you know some of us do it multiple times a week now uh and uh, actually, my fastest time on a fixed gear is faster than my fastest time on a on a road bike climbing up uh, those hills now. Uh, and you know, the whole idea, like, I listen to your podcast, and you know, you always talk about climbing hills on a fixed gear and how much you love it and why it's so great. And I think the whole idea is that you're doing something on a track bike they are not supposed to be able to do. You know, they say like, oh, you know fixed gear is okay for flats or uh, fixed gear is okay for track. Uh, but, you know, you say like you can't shift gears, so you can't go up hills. And uh, uh, that's what's great about it. You're not supposed to be able to do it, but you do it anyway. Yeah, there's definitely something to be said about. I mean, I guess that's kind of like my mentality in life in general is like, is just, I don't know, just fuck it just do it if you want to <laughs> yeah <clears throat> if it's not hurting anybody and it's like fun for you then then just let people do their thing yeah and, and, and it's like an interesting challenge and like you said uh about climbing you know faster on your fixed gear i think there is something to be said about that because i think the harder part about doing climbs on a fixed gear is the descending obviously for obvious reasons uh -huh. um but it's still fun you can get into a really cool rhythm you know, if, as long as you're regulating your speed and just not letting yourself spin out too much, mm -hmm. um, and you don't have to skid all the way down. Like I've done, no. I've done big descents where I only skidded like, not I didn't even do big skids. It was just like little hop skids just to like slow down a little bit before a hairpin or something. Yeah, and, and the people that you talk to, they don't really consider the descending part. They always like they always think like, oh, that's really hard to climb up. And then it's like, yeah, you choose your gear. Uh, more so to go down than I do, at least, to go down than to go up. Yeah, exactly. Because the thing about going up is sometimes you're going to go faster because you're not losing your momentum switching gears, <laughs> which is a real thing that you do sometimes. You'll be like, oh, I'm, now I'm like spinning out and I'm going really slow, but it's easier. <laughs> but on yeah, a fixed gear, you can't do that. You're just standing up. Like, Yeah, especially when... if you're bad at shifting gears. Yeah, exactly. Like some people are just bad at it. I always and, pick the wrong gear first before I find the good one. <laughs> yeah, me too, for sure. <laughs> but having, yeah, like on the fixed gear, like them. you get to a steeper part and you just stand up and push harder. You don't switch mm -hmm. gears to to keep your same cadence. So sometimes you actually end up going faster up those like <laughs> little kickers and stuff because <laughs> otherwise yeah. you're just going to stop. <laughs> yeah, the uh, we make jokes about it because I did a. Uh, I did a really long tour as well. It's not long for me anyway. It was like uh, 200 kilometers uh, uh, back to back. And I was the only fixed gear rider out of, I don't know, 1,400 uh, cyclists. And I'd be riding with them on the second day where there are all these rolling hills. And, you know, I'd uh, maybe I'd fall back a little bit on the downhills, but then I would pass them on the uphills when they would be downshifting, and then I would never see them again. I would just catch up to the next group. Oh, that's awesome. And then all the road cyclists, you know, uh, when they see passing when you're climbing up a hill, and they might not notice that your bike is different, but if they do, they'll think you're crazy, or they'll, like, congratulate you. It's like, oh, wow, that's really impressive. Man. And uh, I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from from road cyclists uh, who who see me uh, climbing up mountains or doing these, these long tours. 
Yeah, that's rad. There's a guy out in, there's a town in Colorado called uh, Durango, and it's like big for road cycling and mountain biking and stuff. But there's this road race that happens out there called the Iron Horse Classic. And <clears throat> this kid for like the past like two or three years has been doing it on a fixed gear bike. And he's the only guy that does the road race on a fixed gear. They let him do it, you know, because uh, it's not a USA cycling race. It's like an independent race but but you know it's a race sponsored by coca-cola it's called the coca-cola classic it's 50 miles like it's up in the mountains there's lots of climbing and he does it every year on a brakeless fixed gear and actually like the response for him doing it has been so good that next year they might actually add a fixed gear category into the road race so i'm going to try to rally people and get a bunch of people to go (laughs) yeah and uh, I think it's it's those small little concessions which are really going to uh, make make the scene and make the community happen to a greater degree and make things more normal. Absolutely, because like crits are really cool to go to and stuff, but I like seeing the the weirder races. You know, I like yeah. seeing the fixed forty two. I like seeing that you guys are out there doing the battle of the gats. I like seeing. Uh, track lacrosse like <laughs> yeah I, I just think there's like people get so obsessed with like rules and stuff and like what you can do on a bike and I don't know like I grew up racing BMX and we just rode our bikes wherever we built dirt jumps and construction sites and we you know just like it was you know just DIY just do what you want yeah and I think that's a big part of the fixed community just making it happen yourself sometimes you hear about uh, David Trimble and Red Hook Crit and the beginning of all these other races like uh, Mission Crit and Bone Machine and when they started out just as some dudes in a parking lot or some dudes on uh, uh, on a street uh, at midnight uh, and now they're huge uh, criteriums and the, like uh, it makes you think I can do that. You know, I can't, I can't have a Super Bowl in my backyard, but I can go to a mall at midnight and with some pylons and my friends and, you know, ha- have a $5 all in winner take all type, uh, type of, uh, race. And that's kind of where battle of the gats, uh, that's kind of the, that mentality. Cause we're not, we're, it's an underground event and we're flying underneath the radar as much as possible. Yeah, there's. I think that that's the way to do it, really. Um, so tell me, like, when was the? How many have you guys done so far? So we just had our third one. Our first one was done uh, 2016, and uh, that year we just had uh, one huge category, uh, and. This guy, Max Rubarth, won it that year. And Max is famous on Instagram for having the most insane tan lines in the world. <laughs> so if you – and his hashtag is the weekly Lex, And he just has – he's uh, he's now on a uh, – I think they call it a pro-continental team. No, yeah. it's kind of, I'm, I don't think it's that high. Uh, anyway, he's on uh, a team by Da Vinci in Quebec. And he just has these most intense tan lines. Uh So that year, like I said, we had no categories. We had men and women were racing together, or rather the men and the woman were racing together. (laughs) And uh, we had these really weird ideas. Uh, I was kind of inspired by this MASH video I saw where uh, there was this guy on a scooter who had, like, money taped to him or something, and all the guys on the bikes were trying to catch up and grab the money. And we tried to do that, but when you tape money to the fastest cyclists and give them a head start. No one catches up. Like, like no one's going to, no one's going to rip that $20 bill off them. (laughs) So we didn't do that again. Uh, uh, 2017, uh, that was last year, uh, the race that we had, uh, and some people from Montreal came. So we probably doubled in size from the first year. Uh, and, uh, there was a, so there was a guy who happened to be visiting the Montreal group because they had 
their crit the day before our race. And it was a guy named Brian Meegans, who uh, who runs FixGearCrit.com, FixGear Coffee. You know, he's uh, he's uh, at the time he was a super strong uh, rider. Uh, had done uh, uh, he'd won the crit the day before, and he comes to our little race and the next the next city over, and just demolishes everyone it's hilarious <laughs> it was so funny to see and then that year we had an a group a b group and uh, a dedicated women's category as well uh, and then this last year uh, we grew even more and uh, it was a super fun time this year uh, we, uh, uh, we put out the video we had you know guys racing in speedos we had uh, we were giving away beer. It was uh, this year was a really fun time too. Nice. We have all these like fun prizes, so it's not just like it's not just like get to the top, beat beat everyone else. It's like oh, who did it with the heaviest bike? Who did it with the lightest bike? Who did it with the uh, who came in dead last? You know, uh, uh, and we've had uh, really good uh, support from. Uh, stores in the area, clubs, uh, you know, sometimes a roadie will hear about it and, uh, he'll bring out his, a track bike and, uh, come out and, uh, and I think it's just growing every year and I'm kind of worried that it's actually going to get too big for me. Uh, uh, and I might have to, I think we have, I'm just worried that it's going to get too big and I might not be able to do it. Hmm. Well, now that but, you're on the podcast, it's going to be huge. So, yeah, I know that's <laughs> what I'm saying. The race is about 18 kilometers. Brian Brian Megan's uh, did it in 31 minutes and 13 seconds. And you know, like I'm by comparison, I did it in uh, 40 minutes and 19 seconds. So he's significantly faster than me, and I came. Uh, I was actually able to race it for the first time because I, uh, uh, because I, it was the first time I got to race. I was too busy running it. And then I did it, uh, like I said, in 40 minutes, I came second in the, the B category. Uh, and yeah, that's, uh, Mike Woods, for example, uh, on his road bike, he did that same segment in 29 minutes and 38 seconds. And he just came third in the world. So yeah, let's talk about that. Like, what is 2019 looking like for you guys? Uh, I know you're worried about the race getting bigger, but is it still something you're trying to do? Or yeah, and every year that I run Battle of the Gats, and uh, my wife will wife will corroborate the story. Is like I'm not an organized person, and for me to organize this this large event, you know, it's just so draining to me. And I I always say to myself. This is the last year. This is like, I'm not doing it. Like they're out of luck. Someone else is going to have to do it. And then the event happens. And I'm like, this is great. I can't wait for next year. <laughs> but, uh, I have a couple, couple ideas for the community, uh, next year. Uh, so I want to have multiple events, like, uh, maybe not multiple, like not multiple battle of the gats, but, uh, you know, some hill sprints, maybe some fixed gear time trials, uh, some checkpoint races or some, some local Strava challenges. And I want everyone who's in the scene here in Ottawa uh, to have an online leaderboard and be earning points. Uh, and instead of Battle of the Gats crowning a uh, King of the Gats, what I want is there to be a Battle of Ottawa and for there to be a King of Ottawa. Uh, and then the battle of the gats will be part of that. So I want, you know, and this isn't just for, uh, uh, you know, elite racers because admittedly they're not going to care about our little fixed gear scene. <laughs> uh, I want it to be for, you know, that, that, uh, chubby Uber eats messenger or, you know, just, uh, someone who's on a uh, conversion. You know, I, uh, I just want more reasons uh, and more ways to give back to, uh, uh, you know, the scene here in Ottawa. Nice. I'm curious to hear about this Ottawa fixed gear fund. Yes. 
This is a, a new idea uh, that me and other Mike uh, have come up with. And so if we do raise a little bit of money and we don't expect it to be, be much, uh, and I want to, even if I just put like 50 bucks uh, a month away in, in a PayPal account, I want uh, just to support uh, some up and coming uh, fixed gear athletes in the city. Uh, so whether it's give, you know, buying them a, a skin suit or a speed suit or making sure that they have, you know, uh, some proper bars or some good tires, uh, or paying for, uh, uh, paying for entry fees for races or driving them to, uh, driving them to, a race in the next city over or whatnot. I just want to be able to choose a couple up and coming athletes in the city and, uh, help them out as much as possible. And, uh, for 2019, there's, there's, uh, there's a couple people who we really like. There's a girl named, uh, Isabel and, uh, uh, a guy named Theo and they've been doing well. Uh, Isabel is very new. She's very fast. Uh, she's really nice. Theo is, whenever he shows up to rides, he's one of the greatest guys to ride with. And we just want to uh, support them and see how far they can go. And actually, uh, Isabel uh, just started getting coached by Addison, Addison Zawada. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, because she's brand new, she has all the potential in the world. Uh, we're just excited to see what she can do yeah that's such a rad idea just like getting in with a community like that and trying to really grow it and and support the riders and i think that's so important because i think that this sport like has a lot of potential and <clears throat> for a lot of growth and not only like just for fixed gear but also just like something int interesting for cycling in general that feels like fresh and, and feels like, hmm, I don't know, maybe like with less baggage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I love you road know, cycling. Don't get me wrong, but like, you know, Valverde. It's so bogged down by tradition. Yeah. Tr uh, tradition. Yeah, exactly. And I talked a lot about that with, uh, Iman, which you'll hear about because, you know, he's out in Europe riding with quick step. Um, and also like riding with specialized rocket espresso and just hearing about like the complete difference that each team has, you know, he's uh -huh. like, he's like specialized rocket espresso is the only contract I've ever signed. That's that requires you to go to after parties and pre parties. That's hilarious. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think that's so important. Cause yeah. Um, like as much as I love road cycling, I, I even, lo I love the old stuff. I love reading about, Eddie Merckx and, and copy and the first tour de France is like all that stuff. Like, I think it's such a beautiful, interesting sport that uh -huh. I want to see cycling, like actually be able to like grow and prosper and also maybe not take itself as seriously, but yeah. <clears throat> and I think, uh, I think it's really booming now. Yeah, absolutely. And I think because a lot of the toxic, like, 80s and 90s, like, attitudes about cycling is, like, you know, what led to all the the BS that we all know that that era produced. But <laughs> So, and last year we had uh, Evelyn Sifton, who uh, you've had on the show. Yes. And, uh, you know, we were able to see what she was able to do with – you know, just a tiny bit of support, uh, from us, you know, we just, uh, she wanted to go to a race. I took her to a race and then, uh, we're just over, just over a year away and she's in her second, uh, uh, red hook crit Milano and she's yeah. going to be racing with, uh, Ash Dubin and she won the uh, fixation open and, yep. you know, uh, that's she's, so huge. So rad yeah. to see her doing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, can't be more proud of her, and uh, she's kind of like the template uh, for these auto fix gear fund athletes, the auto fix gear fund kids. Yeah, that's that's a great name. 
right? <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about um, what inspires you, you know, like videos or music and like what you use to kind of like get pumped up to go ride. <laughs> oh, okay. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm very much a, uh, I listen to a lot of like uh, rock music, you know, Death From Above is probably my favorite favorite band ever uh but uh you know i find that like hip-hop is hip-hop's better i think for for riding bikes because uh, especially climbing you, you can't uh you can't get too amped up you need to be like you need to pace yourself and the the beat's really good for that uh so in terms of music i think that's really good for riding uh the the diy culture of uh you know i i'm really inspired by uh you know fixed gear crit you know brian's uh brian's uh website i'm really inspired by uh your podcast whenever i listen to your podcast and you have a really good guest on i'm like oh yeah i should do that i can do that uh here in ottawa or uh you know mash for example i mean who isn't who doesn't like mash who rides fixed gear bike i don't know there's no one yeah i mean that was like that's like a touchstone of like <laughs> and everybody that i've talked to from mash i've had evan on i've had Chaz on uh sam spicer lives in denver he's coming on um because he just moved here um yeah, all those guys are so cool. And everybody's, like, so nice and just so down to just, like, ride. I mean, you know, Chaz is, like, just rode across Canada with, like, Gus Morton and, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, like, they do, like, they're in China to go do, like, you know, fixed gear crits. The hurricane and, crit, yeah. Yeah, and it's just, like, it's just so rad that they're just, like, just so down to do stuff and just, like, support cycling and make the bikes they want to make and make the videos they want to make and just... I don't know. It's just like, uh, I think it's kind of the embodiment of like, just kind of like what we're all trying to do, you know, just like do this. There's like a lot of positive cool things too. on these weird bikes. Yeah, exactly. And there's a lot of positive stuff too. Like just getting people out of their cars and just like getting out on the streets and doing some exercise, but in a way that yeah. doesn't feel like rigid and lame. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I never go to the gym or rather I don't go to the gym from, like April to December. Uh, and you know, it's just, uh, it's my transportation. It's my social activity. It's my exercise. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just wish that I was in the same place I am now. It's 20 years ago as like a late, late teenager, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I feel you there. <laughs> so let's talk about the bike that you're riding now, because it's really cool. So I'm jealous. The I I don't know if you have any anatomical challenges, but I have these. I have my I have a tiny bit of scoliosis. I have this really short back, and it has been insane to try to find a bike frame which fits me. Uh, right now, I'm riding a pink Engine Eleven Sprinter. And it's, I'm in love with it. Uh, I wish they made a road version so I could ride that as well. But it has a super short top tube, uh, has a long rake fork, like 45 degree, uh, 45 millimeters. Uh, it's, I, I'm, I think it's just the best frame for me personally. Uh, cause it, uh, it's a 53 or 54 C tube, but it's like a 52 top tube which is backwards. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I just love it so much. I have like a set of, I have two wheel sets for it. One's like a set of woven carbon rims. Uh, and, uh, they ride like a dream. And I have a, uh, I have another set cause I didn't like, you can't ride carbon rims all the time. Like not when you're, uh, going to work, like, they were just getting uh, dinged up a little bit, a little bit too quickly. Yeah. So I wanted, I picked up like uh, I googled, I did as much Google foo as I could, and I was trying to find a matching set of 
chub hubs and i got a, probably the last front 24 hole chub hub in the world i think so i have a, a set of uh uh chub hubs and uh yeah i can't that's i love that bike yeah it's a red bike i love the engine 11s and i love i love a pink bike so pink pink is the fastest color didn't uh <laughs> uh Merck's, Merck's rode some pink bikes didn't he yeah he did and i think all city they did that pink mr pink that was a direct like homage to that bike too all right i'm gonna cut in here this is the part where my sd card got full and we had to cut it short but i want to thank mike so much for coming on the podcast it was really great talking with him we'll have uh them on again when battle of the gats is coming around and getting closer and maybe hopefully i'll be able to go out and we'll do a battle of the gats episode and find them on instagram at auto affix gear and at aerosaur and all that information will be in the show notes <laughs> All right, that does it for another episode of Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to our sponsors at The Bicycle Broker, www.bicyclebroker.com. Visit us at www.savethetrackbike.com. The music is Slag Girl by Vitamin Pets. Find us on Instagram at Save the Track Bike. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.